Hi neighbor, my name is Laird Davis and this week we throw away the ramen and put on our aprons for our culinary episode. Join us as I learn more about campus cooks and we attempt to prepare food without trashing the studio. Callie interviews an executive chef from App State's Food Services and all of the hosts compete to see who is most in tune with their taste buds. Chow down as I say, hi neighbor. Campus Cooks is a student organization at App State. It unites students and faculties with a passion for creating healthy, diverse meals. They host events open to the entire App State community to learn and share recipes and share their skills with the community through service projects. I'm here today with Caitlin Halley. Hey, thank you for joining the show. Good to be here. So tell me a little bit about Campus Cooks and what they do. So we're a student organization here uh, at App State and what we try to do is we encourage uh, college students to come in and learn how to cook and we encourage people of all skill levels to come in and you know share their skills, learn from other people and just sort of broaden their horizons as to what they can cook here on campus. I know that uh, there are plenty of students out there who wish that they would make more meals for themselves. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people. Um, I think a major obstacle for them though is it's very expensive. Uh, how does that work out in, for campus cooks? So for campus cooks, what we do uh, on a day-to-day -day meeting is that we, um, we have our members vote on the types of foods that they wanna make. Um, for this semester, we've been doing a lot of international foods. And so the officers will buy the ingredients and then we'll divvy it up among the people. And usually it's um, uh, between three and five dollars for most meetings. So we're able to get really good quality food for a really cheap price. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, so we were talking earlier about some of the events that are going on for Campus Cooks and that includes some of these international nights. What are mm -hmm. some of the ones that you've done already and what are ones that are coming up? So one, probably one of the more unique ones that we've done this semester is we did Tunisia. We, we did um, this really interesting stew that had like tomatoes and eggs and it was really, really good. Um, we, upcoming, uh, we have our Japanese meeting coming up nice. and we're still pulling in votes from our members as to what exactly want, what we wanna make. But um, on the list possibly is katsudon and sushi and all these really great Japanese meals that are really classic to that country. Nice. Uh, something I've always wanted to try is taking that, you know, quick ramen mm -hmm. and trying to turn that into a legitimate ramen, like adding, you know, a quail egg or yeah. just anything you can get your hands on. So something along those lines. Yeah, I, I've definitely done that before on my own. Um, and that's definitely something that we could do in, fu in future <laughs> semesters. Um, but like a really simple way to like spice up your ramen is to just like get a couple of vegetables from, you know, the store and a sauce off of like the Asian uh, section of the store and that will really uh, spice up your ramen instead of like the flavor packets. Okay, nice. And uh, let's see. Yeah, so the people who are interested in getting involved in Campus Cooks, do they need to sign up? Do they have to pay club dues? What do they need to do to get involved? So we don't have club dues. What we do ask is for people to bring in uh, a certain amount of money, you know, between two and five dollars to pay for um, the meal so that uh, none of our officers are sort of burdened with the, the grocery list. Um, and anybody can sign up any time of year. Uh, you, you just have to go on the org sync page and you know, RSVP for one of our meetings. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm looking forward to making some food here in the studio with you in just a few minutes. I'm excited. Thank you. Campus Cooks has their meeting Sunday at 3 p.m. in the Summit Hall Kitchen, room 138B. You can also follow them online at, on Instagram at appcooks and on orgsync.com by searching for Campus Cooks. In just a moment, Caitlin teaches me a delicious yet simple dip recipe. So Caitlin, what are we making today? Today we are going to make a goat cheese spread with pomegranate and honey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and how expensive was this, uh, all the ingredients here? So I probably spent $15, but this is gonna make a lot of goat cheese, you know, for Thanksgiving or the holidays. It's gonna be a real good party favor to, you know, set out and let okay. people snack on. Nice, so uh, how do we begin? So you begin by um, mashing up the goat cheese. Okay, and yeah. what with will a we fork. need? Um, 
Here, we'll add some more goat cheese into it. You're gonna need uh, eight ounces, which is usually like two logs of the small uh, goat cheese. Yep, yep, there it All goes. Right. Um, so just like start mashing it up? Yeah, just start right. mashing it up, and then we'll add uh, three tablespoons of Greek yogurt, just plain Greek yogurt into it. All right, how's that looking? Pretty good. Um, it'll help a little bit uh, when once you get um, some of the uh, Greek yogurt into it. And so just start mashing that up until it becomes sort of like a paste. All right. And something that's a little more spreadable than just goat cheese. All right, meanwhile, what will you be working on? So meanwhile, I am going to zest the lemon. We're going to need a teaspoon of lemon zest. So I'll do that while you continue to okay. sort of mix all that up. And I should be mixing it until it's just kind of like a fine spread? Yeah, yeah. And if you feel like it's too thick, go ahead and add some more uh, um, Greek yogurt. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of that. So after I finish uh, getting this to a sort of fine, uh, creamy texture, uh, what is the next step? So the next step is to add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. All right. And so uh, we're just going to kind of wing it here. Yeah. Uh, uh, usually with uh, packages, it can be like two capfuls. That's usually about where it is. I, I don't usually ever use um, measuring cups when I'm making you know, things like dips that are uh, yeah, one of the, sort of like, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that has always kind of held me back in the kitchen is I am way too cautious. I'm worried that like I'm going to get it off by just a slight bit and it's gonna ruin the whole dish, it's gonna catch on fire, all of those sort of comedic assumptions about cooking gone wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's my fear a lot of the yeah, time. So. That usually is only, only comes to be a problem in baking. With like regular cooking, you can sort of wing it a lot more than you can with baking. Right. Um, Do you think that's enough? Uh, yeah, just try mixing it in. Okay. Um, and a lot of the times with like on, online recipes, they underestimate how much seasoning you put in. So you can definitely sort of, you know, customize it and make it your own and sort of add more seasoning than it says on the recipe and it'll taste, you know, better if not, yeah. Okay, nice. And uh, on average, how long would you say it would take to prepare this dip? Um, it can usually be done in like five to ten minutes. It's, it's something really simple that you can do like right before a party if you have like last minute. All right. Okay, so I think that's looking okay consistent wise. Yep, that looks great. So Fantastic. now we're going to add a little bit of lemon zest and sort of mix that in. Okay. Um, and save a little bit of lemon zest for garnish just to sprinkle on top when everything's said and done. Give that little stylistic flair. Yeah. Nice. All right, so now I'm gonna break open this pomegranate. And pomegranate is a wonderful uh, winter fruit that you can add to, um, it, it's really good on any Ooh. sort of like Mediterranean type dishes. And yeah, that's what a pomegranate looks like on the inside if you ever need, if you've never seen it before. Um, it's really something really good to snack on, and it's yeah, one like, of my favorite fruits. Uh, I've only ever had it pre-made, but I love chocolate-covered pomegranates. Oh, uh, put so a little good. dark chocolate over that. I can eat a, a million of those things, honestly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, should we go ahead and put in the pomegranates, or are we doing honey first? Honey. The pomegranate is mostly going to be a garnish and something to like crunch on on top. It's going to give uh, the dip a little bit of texture. Okay. And so, for the honey, you're going to add two tablespoons of honey, which we're just going to wing it again. Okay. Yeah, that, okay, that looks yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that sort of, um, you know, far at the hip style of, of cooking. It's something that I, I really need to train myself to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is starting to look pretty nice. Yeah. Um, All right. So we're going to add a little bit of pepper just to give it a little bit of an extra kick. Um, and also one really good thing to like spice up 
any sort of dishes to use fresh pepper instead of like the pre-ground because uh, any like fresh ground uh, spice is going to taste a lot better. Okay. It, it's perceived to be more fresh and it'll taste fresher in your dish. Nice. So you mentioned earlier that this is a sort of a Mediterranean style dish with yeah. Greek yogurt and olive oil and those sorts of things. Uh, what dishes would this pair well with? What would this make a good appetizer for? Um, I think it would definitely work, work well with some white fish, but okay. also uh, lamb and uh, pork and things that are, you know, okay. a little fresher. Nice. All right, so we've got a pretty good consistency here. Uh, are we ready to add the pomegranate? Uh, yeah, we're going to garnish a little bit. Um, we're going to add a little bit of extra honey and drizzle it over just to, you know, make it look pretty. Okay. All right. Nice. <clears throat> um, now we're going to do the pomegranate. I'm just going to steal this fork. Go ahead. <laughs> so this is usually easier to do with a spoon, but you just kind of scoop it out. Huh. Yeah, the pomegranate is one of those fruits that I've always seen the interior yeah. of, but I've never actually seen this close. So it's uh, this is really fascinating, honestly. Um, like, where can you find pomegranates? Because I've never actively searched for them, but are they available at most grocery stores? Um, some grocery stores, uh, typically more of like the healthy variety. Um, I haven't been able to find it at Walmart, but um, I found these at Publix, and they're also available at Whole Foods and probably Earth Fair. Okay. Yeah. Just add it to yogurt. Uh, it, it goes really well on most like things that have a bit of tang to it. Okay, so we've got a pretty good amount of pomegranate okay. in here, some honey as well. So uh, the last thing to do is to add a little bit of lemon zest. Just sprinkle it on top. All right. And there we are. That's it. Yeah. Nice. Now so, we taste. All right, let's go for it. <laughs> uh, what do you recommend, red style crackers or? Uh, uh, you can. You, for this, you can use probably any style cracker, uh, Ritz, um, uh, huh. pita chips, bagel chips, anything really. Just anything that'll be a vessel to get it into your mouth. <laughs> All right, let's pop it down the hatch. Mmm. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's really smooth yet tangy with uh, like a little bit of sourness to it. It kind of reminds me of gingerbread a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can check out the recipe uh, to this goat cheese with honey and pomegranate spread in just one second. Coming up, Callie talks to an executive chef at Food Services. Appalachian Food Services has been self-operated since 1925 and is committed to serving the Appalachian community using sustainable practices, creative and intentional menu planning, and constantly engaging the ever-changing dialogue surrounding food. I'm here today with Jules Bott. Jules, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Can you tell me a little bit about what your role is with Food Services? I'm the executive chef for Food Services, so basically planning menus, um, organizing everything, recipes, keeping everyone motivated. Got you. So how did you first get involved with cooking? How did you become a chef? Well, that's kind of ironic. I'm from the Pinehurst area and um, not sure what I wanted to do with my life. So I got a job in a kitchen in high school and just kind of took off from there. So what all does it take to keep food services running on a daily basis? A lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We have a lot of support staff, um, lots of organization. Yeah. And of course, lots of sourcing. Yep, okay. So then what goes into deciding what the menus will be each day? Well, that's a, a lot of factors. Um, how much the students enjoy certain things is the biggest, right? <laughs> yep. Um, cost is always a factor. Um, the amount of waste it would produce, the amount of labor it takes to prepare it, holding times. Cool. So then what are some of the ways that you guys try to keep the menu changing so that students don't get bored with the food? We try to keep feedback coming in as much as possible. Um, we also try to have fun ourselves. If we're having fun and not getting bored, chances are you know, the students are getting bored too. Yeah, there you go. So I know that App prides itself in its sustainable mission. What's our, what are some of the ways that Food Services participates in that? Well, we're, 
very proud of what we do for sustainability. Um, a lot of our, almost all of our to-go containers are compostable corn plastic, including the new uh, cake to-go containers we rolled out just recently. We compost um, all our food. We also donate leftover food to the Hunger Coalition. And we try to source everything we can locally. I think we're at 26% last year of locally sourced products. That's awesome. So what role do students play in food services? Well, come and eat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the biggest. Let us know what you like. Sign up for some shifts once in a while and get to know everyone in the buildings. Cool. So if students are looking to get more hands-on, more involved with food services, what are some of the ways that they can do that? Absolutely. The easiest is to pick up a few shifts with us through the student coordinator. Um, also, just giving us feedback, talking with myself, um, Pam Klein, the director of food services, uh, Stephanie, our communications specialist. Awesome. So what is some of the favorite things that you've made working through food services? Well, my personal favorites have been the Carolina Chow Downs. What's that? Uh, where we showcase, twice a year, we showcase nothing but local cuisine and River Street. Awesome. Way cool. So what are some of the things that you make through that? So my personal favorite was uh, because I have a relationship with Bob Shipley from Shipley Beef okay. uh, from my previous experience, uh, sourcing the steamship round we did in the spring from him and his farm was awesome. He got to come and talk to the students. Uh, his farm is over in Vilas, so it's very, very local. Way cool. Well, thank you for talking with me, Jules. Absolutely. You can dine at one of the App State dining halls, enjoy freshly baked goods from the bake shop, work with the catering team to create your ideal study break or luncheon, grab a snack from one of the 150 vending machines on campus, grocery shop, or grab lunch on the go from campus markets. Coming up, we, we meet with more neighbors here in Boone, and the host and I compete to see who is the best at guessing what flavored jelly bean we are eating. Hi, neighbor. I'm Ryan Morton. I'm a manager and barista at the Wired Scholar and Crossroads in the Student Union. And I came to App State because it is absolutely beautiful and I love the cold weather. Hi, neighbor. My name is Carly. I work at Casa Rustica and I love it because it brought me all my best friends. And I love Boone because the people here are awesome. Hi, neighbor. My name is John Pierce. I work at the University Bookstore. I like working at the University Bookstore because I have to get to meet a lot of students. Um, I love Boone because of the wonderful mountains and the, uh, the, the beautiful people that live in this community. Hey neighbor, I'm Katie and I'm a senior at Appalachian State majoring in health sciences and I love App State because it gave me the friends that gave me the courage to audition for American Idol. <laughs> All three of us hosts try out an assortment of jelly beans and try guessing the flavor. We each got the chance to look over the sheet and to see the names of the flavors and when we eat the jelly beans we close our eyes. We each get to eat five and we get 10 seconds per jelly bean to guess what flavor it is. Let's see who knows their jelly beans. Mmm, strawberry? Mm, mango? Ooh, is that that fun, like, Baja Margarita flavor? Baja Margarita is my final answer. I have no idea. Mmm, very blue? Hmm, is this one... Tutti Frutti? Um. Red Delicious. Oh no, no, no. It's licorice. Oh wow, I don't know. Java? <laughs> oh. I go, what? This is chocolate. This is wowy chocolate. Wow, wow chocolate. Um. Oh. What flavor is this? Orange. Orange. Tangerine. Tangerine. Oh. Oh no. This is like the popcorn one, isn't it? Okay, this is like a chocolate or like a coffee, like Java. Like a chocolate Java coffee. Uh, maybe the um, root, no, not root beer, tiramisu. Ice cream cake? Root beer. Oh. 
Orange. Tangerine. Peach. Thank you for joining us today on this episode about food at App State. We hope that this inspires you to put away the easy Mac and try your hand at home cooking. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at WatchAppTV and check out our YouTube channel at AppTV for more content. Until next time, bye neighbor.